Hey everybody, my name is Deja and welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing a Christmas romance reading vlog. <laughs> So I read five books throughout the course of this reading vlog. I read Wreck the Halls by Tessa Bailey, Love Light Farms by BK Borison, One Day in December by Josie Silver, Mangoes and Mistletoe by Adriana Herrera, and All I Want by Alexandria House. And because I look for very similar things throughout Christmas romances, I decided to rank these things on six different factors as well as giving my general star rating. So I ranked it on Christmas slash holiday vibes, the characters, emotional impact, romance compatibility, plot slash conflict and the smut those are the six factors that i ranked these books on and i've already read all the books and i'm just doing this intro after so i hope that you guys enjoyed this reading vlog and let's go back to past asia where she read the very first book So the book I'm going to be starting this vlog off with is going to be Wreck the Halls by Tessa Bailey. This is Tessa Bailey's new release that she released for Christmas. I'm not sure when it came out. I'm pulling it up. It came out October 3rd of this year. It is her new romance. It says it's a sexy, hilarious standalone rom-com about the adult children of two former rock stars who team up to convince their estranged mothers to play a Christmas Eve concert. I really, really, really loved Window Shopping. Surprisingly, that's like one of my favorite Tessa Bailey books that I've read, if not my favorite from her. So I'm really excited to try out another one of her romances. So I'm going to be starting this one on audio today.
So I ended up finishing Wreck the Halls by Tessa Bailey and I decided for each book in this reading vlog I'm going to be rating them on a scale of six different things. I know that Elizabeth from Reading Riley does this but um so the first category is going to be Christmas slash holiday vibes, second category is going to be characters, three is emotional impact, four is romance compatibility, five is plot slash conflict, and then the last category is smut. So we're going to go over all those topics and that's how I'm going to review the book. So I think I've already kind of given y'all a little bit of a synopsis but we follow our two main characters in this story and they were friends growing up because their mothers were in a band together that broke up because of basically a man but it's not confirmed to the public but they know that it was because of a man it was like a little love triangle so they have kind of fallen off but there is this offer that they get to be on this reality tv show where basically they have cameras following them all the time and they are trying to get their mothers to reunite to play at this like christmas ball or like you know like the ball not like a ball ball but like you know when they call it like the jingle ball like that so they're trying to get them to play at some like holiday ball but our main male character basically convinces our female main character because he needs the money that they would get from this because he's being blackmailed by his biological father who's the man who broke up the band for christmas house holiday vibes honestly i'm gonna give this book a two star one would be like absolutely no holiday vibes it definitely mentioned some things but it was barely in there at all like they could have taken out the christmas part and made it completely like a different any like big reunion and it would have been the same exact story the christmas vibes in this were not strong at all honestly it's like a one and a half to two star and then for characters i'm gonna give them a three they didn't stand out to me at all but i feel like they definitely did have a little bit of dimension to them especially our main male character i really enjoyed his character a lot um our female main character was a little lackluster they both did not stand out to me at all like i really would not remember anything about their characters except that the main male character he was getting blackmailed and then also he has this like um lack of emotional intimacy that was very interesting to explore and it also kind of relates to a kink that he has so that was really interesting to explore as well then for emotional impact i'm gonna give this one a one it did not emotionally impact me at all which is something i generally look for in romances so yeah i need i want it to emotionally impact me even if it's not like oh my god i'm so sad or oh my god i'm crying i want it to be like oh my god like i'm kicking my feet up like doo -doo -doo -doo, like i love it and this book didn't even have that for me but for romance compatibility i am going to give it four out of five because i do feel like that the two characters did have a good romantic compatibility even though the characters didn't really stand out to me in general so i did enjoy their romance um i enjoyed their, them together more than i enjoyed them apart um i thought that they did go together really well and that was really enjoyable then for plot slash conflict i enjoyed the plot and there wasn't such a stupid stupid conflict it was kind of stupid so i'm gonna give it three and a half um it wasn't completely dumb but it was a little dumb but i enjoyed the plot of getting their mothers back together i thought that was really interesting and unique so that was very interesting and then for the smut i'm gonna give it I'm gonna give it a 4.5 out of 5. tessa bailey really knows how to write smut and this smut was very good it was <laughs> it was very very good i will say that and as i said there was kind of like a kink that was related to this story that was interesting to explore so i liked how she added that in so i think what i'm gonna do is average these out and that's gonna be my rating dang a 2.75 i was gonna give it a 3.5 but you know what i'll meet it in the middle and i'm gonna give this one a three star this one i would recommend if you like the plot but it's not anything stand out and it's not super christmassy like how i want it if this book was a lot christmassier i would recommend it more because i would be like okay this is like a really interesting concept for a christmas book but it didn't really have the christmas vibes it wasn't really emotionally impactful the characters were just okay i did enjoy their romance and i did enjoy the plot and the smut but the other three things were kind of lacking so that's my review of this book i hope that you guys kind of enjoy this type of format um where i'm reviewing the books in this way because i feel like all of the books this is like what i look for in christmas romances specifically so all of them are going to basically have all these elements so i thought that this would be an interesting way to rate them i know that elizabeth from reading riley kind of does this so i wanted to try it out so i think next one that i'm going to be reading is love light farms which is super anticipated for me because i love the cover i've been seeing these type of books everywhere and i have another one in the series but i don't think it's christmasy so yeah but i'm excited to start the series and see if i like it or not So I started Love Light Farms and I'm about a third of the way in and I'm really enjoying this one so far. So we follow our main character and she runs a Christmas tree farm and 
she is kind of in some financial trouble uh, she wants to make sure that she's able to keep paying her workers a living wage and she obviously wants to keep her dream alive which is the christmas tree farm so she enters into this like competition type thing from this instagram influencer and she can win 100k but then also the publicity alone would give her a lot of money so when she enters she decides to lie and say that she runs this christmas tree farm with her boyfriend that does not exist she does not have a boyfriend because she knows this influencer promotes a lot of businesses specifically ones that have some sort of like romantic kind of story intertwined with them so she decides to lie about this and then she actually becomes a finalist so she decides to basically recruit slash ask her best friend who she definitely has feelings for and he definitely has feelings for her but it's kind of like unrequited there's some tension but she ends up asking him to fake date with her so that they can basically convince this lady that they run this christmas tree shop together and they start fake dating pretty early on so then that way the town gets used to them dating because they live in a very small town well he doesn't actually live in the town his mom does he comes and they start fake dating and so that way the town can get used to them being together so when she brings up that fact that they're together or people see them together when she's around that people aren't questioning and like basically like exposing their lie so they start fake dating pretty early before she comes in and i'm really enjoying this one so far as i said it's definitely giving more holiday vibes than wreck the halls for sure but this one actually starts um before halloween and right now where i'm at is thanksgiving in the book and i looked at reviews and they said this book mostly takes place in november and december but before christmas but it's still giving heavy christmas vibes so far or like just holiday vibes which is what i'm looking for and as I said, it's definitely giving more than Wreck the Halls. And I'm enjoying the characters a lot more in this one. I feel like they have more depth and nuance. And I'm enjoying their dynamics a lot. And I'm enjoying a lot of the side characters as well. I think that the author has done a really good job to create the side characters. And they probably have romances later on in the series as well. Because I know this is a series. And so I don't think this one's specifically like a Christmas romance. More of like a holiday romance. Because I know, as I said, it doesn't take place on Christmas. But I'm really enjoying it so far. The lady has not showed up yet in the book where I am and as I said it's like not Christmas yet so I'm really excited to like see the plot come to a head and see if there's gonna be a third act breakup hopefully there's not because that would really ruin my experience of this book but yeah um I'm, as i said i'm about like a third of the way in so i'll probably come back to y'all I, I because of these are romances i feel like it's really hard for me to do like a three act update how i like to do i like to do one at 30 percent ish or a third of the way through one at around like 66 percent or two thirds of the way through and then one at the end but generally there's not enough that happens in that middle third section for me to warrant an update so i may come back to y'all two thirds of the way in or when i finish the book but regardless i'm enjoying this one so i'm hoping that it ends up being at least a four star i can't see it going below a four star but you know we never know because if there's a stupid third act conflict then i could definitely see me giving it like a 3.5 or like even a three so we'll see but i'm hoping for a four star at least or a five star so last night i finished love like farms and so now it's time to wrap it up i'm gonna rank it on all the same things i ranked the first one on so the first thing that i'm ranking it on is christmas slash holiday vibes and i would give this one like a 3.5 it definitely had a lot of holiday vibes it talked about um halloween thanksgiving leading up into christmas but it didn't take place on actual christmas but i think it did a pretty good job exploring the holidays overall and i did enjoy the vibes a lot for characters i'm gonna give them a four out of five i enjoyed them a pretty decent amount but they're still not characters that are going to stay in my head forever i think characters that stay in my head forever are like a five out of five like all-time favorite characters that i think about regularly are a five out of five and these weren't that but they were very enjoyable and i enjoyed their personalities and especially the side characters i really enjoy seeing the side characters and their drama and what's going on with them i thought that was fun as well so for emotional impact i'm going to give it a four because i really enjoyed how the book talked about their relationship between the two main characters and it made me feel like a little giddy on the inside and like the things that he would do for her made me feel very giddy but then also we do have some kind of emotional depth within the book because our main character her mother passed away and then also the emotional impact that had me as well was when she's talking about her dream for the farm and how she wants it to thrive and the things that the side characters would do for her as well really just made me feel very cozy and warm on inside so 
so I have to give it a four. Then for romance compatibility, I'm giving that one a four as well. And that's because, again, I enjoyed the characters a lot. I enjoyed their romance together. I enjoyed all the side characters and their romances. And I thought that they were compatible together. You could definitely tell that the way that they really loved each other and the things that they would do for each other. So a four out of five. And then for plot slash conflict, this one's like a three, 3.5 because I really, really, really loved the plot. At first, I didn't like how long it was taking to get to the woman coming after they started fake dating. Like over half the book is before the woman even comes. But I understand why they did that. And it would have been too long otherwise if they did it the other way or like the other part would have been too long with the woman there if they did it the other way so I understand and the conflict at the end was kind of stupid uh originally this was like a four but then now it's like a three 3.5 because the conflict at the end was stupid I did not like the, like the third act breakup or whatever I thought it was kind of dumb because one of them was just acting a fool the smut I'll give a three. It was pretty average smut. It wasn't anything mind-blowing. It was okay. It was good but it wasn't anything that blew me out the water. So overall this one I think averages out to like a 3.5 but I'm gonna round it up to a four star because that's what my heart is feeling. This one was definitely like a four star read for me. I would definitely recommend it if you're looking for something to read around November. I think that this is the perfect time of year to read it and leading into December and if you're just looking for something really cozy that has a lot of cute characters and a lot of side characters that you can follow later on in the series I'm assuming I would definitely recommend this one and now I'm going to move on to my next book which is Mangoes and Mistletoe and this one is really short it's only three hours on audio so I will probably listen to the whole thing and then come back to y'all I'll let you know what it's about and everything like that So I ended up finishing Mangoes and Mistletoe and this one is going to get a four star for me. I really enjoyed it. We follow our main character and she is a Dominican woman who's been living in America who is like a underground chef and she goes to Scotland for a holiday baking competition or cooking competition I can't remember who's baking or cooking but she ends up going to this competition and they pair them up into teams with the other contestants and she gets paired with another Dominican woman and they end up having a romance I honestly haven't read many sapphic romances I've read more sapphic like horror but not many romances so I really enjoyed that this was a romance the smut was phenomenal I love the smut in this story but there was kind of like a third act conflict that I thought was kind of stupid which is why it's not getting a five star for me but I really enjoyed the writing I enjoyed incorporating the Dominican culture into the story and I also really enjoyed the sapphic love story of it all just the third act conflict was not my favorite but I think if you're looking for something short and sweet that is Christmassy I think that you would enjoy this one so for Christmas slash holiday vibes I'm giving this one like a 2 2.5 star because even though I really enjoyed this backdrop of this holiday competition because I love like those type of shows that are like baking reality show competitions that take place specifically during the holidays I feel like we didn't really get enough of the competition or enough of like the holiday vibes I wish we had more which is kind of a recurring theme that I'm noticing throughout a lot of these romances for characters I'm giving it four stars I really enjoyed their characterization and like for being so sure I feel like they add a lot of background to their story and each of them as individual characters which I really enjoyed for emotional impact I'm giving it a three it didn't really emotionally impact me that much but I thought it was cute so and then for romance compatibility I'm giving it like a four or a five somewhere in there I really enjoyed these two characters together a lot I think that they balance each other like yin and yang I thought that one it was kind of almost like grumpy sunshine in a way which I really really enjoyed and then for plot slash conflict, I'm giving it a three. I really enjoyed the plot of it, like how they were going to this competition and that's how they met and the reasons behind why they were both at the competition I thought were done very, very well. But as I said, there was kind of like that third act conflict that was not my favorite that I thought was kind of stupid. And then the smut, I'm giving like a four. I really enjoyed the smut. It was amazing honestly it's like between a four and a five somewhere in there it was really really phenomenal and it's honestly probably some of my favorite smut that i've read throughout this reading vlog mm -hmm. 
I also read All I Want by Alexandria House and I'm giving this one three stars. This one is a second chance romance between two exes that happens at like a holiday party for one of their families and for Christmas and holiday vibes I'm giving this one a four star. I thought that it was very much Christmassy because it is like a family coming together to celebrate the holidays and this one honestly has felt one of the most Christmassy to me. This one and Love Light Farms have felt the most holiday-ish to me and then for characters I'm giving it like three or four star. The characters were okay but this was only 24 pages so there wasn't much depth or nuance added to their character and then emotional impact I'm giving it to again it was only 24 pages so it's not going to have that big of an emotional impact on me it was very short and so they didn't really add much emotional depth into the story for romance compatibility I'm giving it a four star because I felt like the characters you could tell that they definitely both really loved each other specifically the male main character you could tell that he loved the female main character and vice versa I thought they definitely deserved to be together and then for plot slash conflict I'm giving it a two star because okay so the main reason that they broke up in the first place years prior was because the main character is schizophrenic and pulled a fork out on the guy character which I understand like she was like scared that she would hurt him which is why she's distanced herself from him but for it being so short I feel like this exploration of schizophrenia and the representation wasn't done the best like I don't think it was done necessarily terribly but it just because it was so short I feel like if you are going to make something that is this short I think bringing in a mental health issue is not a smart decision just because it is something that is so nuanced and complex and then for smut I'm giving it a two there was barely any smut in here because it was so short but what I read of it was good it just was so short so there wasn't much of it but overall I'm giving this one a three star I definitely enjoyed it and I would recommend it if you're looking for something extremely short but it's not anything that's going to leave a big impact on you that's going to be long lasting Okay, so I'm about 40% into the last book of the reading vlog, which is One Day in December by Josie Silver. And when I was going into this book, I thought it was going to be more like like heartfelt, more emotional, but it is definitely not that. It is more like just drama. And I was kind of warned about that just as I was starting it by Haley on her Patreon reading sprints. We follow a woman and one day when she is on a bus, she sees a man through the windows and like instantly falls in love with him. And they like she's looking for him for like over a year trying to find this mysterious man because she thinks that she loves him and they had like a connection and then she is like going to like a holiday party I believe it is or some sort of party and her best friend brings her new boyfriend and the new boyfriend happens to be the man she saw on the bus and we're following them over the course of 10 years as they are kind of grappling with this connection that they had but obviously he is in a relationship with her best friend and there's a part of me that's like liking this book because it's drama for drama's sake and there's a part of me that's enjoying the drama of it all but then there's also a part of me that Loki kind of hates it and I can't decide like where this is gonna end up for me I I don't know like I'm sitting around a three star right now because even though I'm like interested and in kind of enjoying the drama of it all it's also giving like random white people shit like white people doing white people things and like that's fine but it's just like I don't want to hear about this girl's life like I'm not that interested in her life like I like the drama of it all but if I wanted to read about drama I would read something like extremely toxic like for example I read Midnight is the Darkest Hour recently and that has a super toxic romantic relationship in it or like even like Verity I know those are like thrillers but I would read like a dark romance or something if I wanted drama and like to be gagged for real this is not gagging me the way that I need it to because it's just like contemporary drama like it's not anything crazy so yeah I don't know it's sitting around like a three star for me right now because it's a fine book I don't think that there's anything wrong with it particularly but I don't think it's absolutely amazing either it's just okay and it does have a lot of cheating in it so if you don't like cheating in books at all you won't like this one it's not bothering me the cheating per se but I'm also like not enjoying it because I feel like their motivations are kind of stupid like you guys saw each other for one instant on a bus like okay like I've never instantly fallen in love with anybody and I think it's kind of unrealistic for that to occur like I feel like most people have like a sense of attraction towards people but like instantly falling in love is like kind of a crazy concept to me personally so it just seems kind of insane that they would know each other for like 10 years and she would literally go behind her best friend's back and he would go behind his girlfriend's back just because like 
they had this one moment where they saw each other through a bus window like it's not giving the romance that I think Josie Silver wanted it to give it's really not but I'll probably finish this one up today so I will come back to y'all and update y'all when I finish so I ended up finishing One Day in December by Josie Silver and I'm giving this one a three star. I'm very much in the middle which this book is very divisive so I'm surprised that I landed in the middle. A lot of people have a lot of opinions on it because there's cheating in it and stuff like that. Sorry my hair is bothering me that it was like that. Um, but a lot of people love this book and everything that it stands for and then other people are like this has cheating in it and I can't emotionally accept this at all. And for me, it was just a middle of the road book. It felt like white people just like doing white people things. It kept me interested and entertained, but it didn't emotionally impact me, which is why I would never really give it a five star. And I think like because of the cheating and because of the characters, I didn't really like love it a ton. I really did not connect to the characters at all. And it's not that I thought that they were necessarily unlikable. I really just did not personally enjoy them as people like I feel like they were just kind of like boring average white people and that to me is not really giving like you can be an unlikable character and I'll still like you as a character because you have layers and complexity and nuance and I feel like these characters were mixing all of that and because of that I didn't really care about the relationship and there was like the cheating and the drama of it all which was it what interested and kept me entertained but it just wasn't a fave so it's like a 2.53 star read for me it's just middle of the road for Christmas holiday vibes I'm giving it two stars because it's called one day in December but I know because it's called one day in december and it has like this super christmasy like snowy cover you think it is going to be christmasy no it takes place over the course of 10 years through all holidays it obviously through all seasons through all months so like i enjoyed what little christmasy bits we got but most of it was not christmasy for characters i'm giving it a three because as I said, they're like kind of boring just white people who don't have a lot of nuance and complexity to them. But they do have like a little bit of something something to them. They're not like the most flat characters that I've ever read. But they're also not like great. Um, and then emotional impact, I'm giving it like a 2. Again, it did not emotionally impact me at all. I can see how it potentially could emotionally impact somebody at the end. It had like a little bit of um, like emotionalness to it at the very end. And there was some like other things in it that I could see emotionally impacting people towards the second half of the story. I could definitely see it doing that to people, but it didn't do it to me. Romance compatibility, I'm giving it like a four star. I feel like these characters are perfect for each other in the way that they're both just as boring as each other. And I feel like boring people belong with boring people. So I feel like they're definitely compatible romance wise and they're both terrible like in the way that they are cheating or going behind other people's backs like they are doing that stuff to each other and like I'm not saying that if you do that you're necessarily like the worst person in the entire world but you know they kind of deserve each other a little bit for that then um plot slash conflict I'm giving like a 2.53 stars I kind of enjoyed that we actually did follow them over the course of 10 years and I enjoyed some of the stuff in the plot in the later half that actually didn't have to do with their romance at all but it's still like wasn't anything mind-blowing or crazy and it didn't have like a ton of plot to it but the conflict of it all made sense um i did this plot slash conflict the conflict that kept them apart made sense throughout the story so i will say that and it didn't like piss me off because one of them was obviously in a relationship like that was the whole idea of it and so i enjoyed that idea but it just it didn't have much going on even though it took place over the course of 10 years if that makes sense and smut i'm giving it two there really wasn't any smut in this i can't really be mad at a book if it doesn't have smut in it so i'm just giving it a two because there really wasn't any that i can recall so like that's fine i'm not mad at it it wasn't like a one star would be like i read like the worst smut of my entire life so if there's no smut i'm just gonna give it a two so overall this is like a 2.53 star for me it was okay if you're looking for something that is going to follow people over the course of 10 years that's not super christmasy that's kind of like boring white people doing boring white people things including cheating and yeah if that's what you're looking for maybe you'll like this one it's not the worst book in the world but it's also not the best book in the world so that's my thoughts on one day in december and those are all of the books that i'm reading for this reading vlog i didn't have a ton of books that i loved for this reading vlog i had three three stars which is kind of terrible um yeah but uh love light farms i did really enjoy and mangoes and mistletoe i also enjoyed so i would definitely recommend those if you're looking for something christmasy for this holiday season and if you made it to the end leave the little snowman emoji down below and i will see y'all my next one
Bye, everybody.